Hello, everyone. Welcome to the China Brief. We bring you the latest global media coverage on China's current affairs, economy, and society, as well as exclusive analysis. Our trustworthy, professional, and multi-perspective China reporting provides judgment and decision-making references for the world's elites. The China Brief is issued in multiple languages, including text, video, podcasts, and books, and is broadcasted 24/7 in the six-degree world. This is China Brief. We bring you the latest content from the world's authoritative media on China's current affairs, economy, and society, as well as authoritative and exclusive analysis. If our content is of value to you, please subscribe to our content. First urgent call since the 19th National Congress. Qin Gang is busy with NPC Standing Committee. Senior leaders of the National People's Congress Standing Committee (NPCSC) of China decided on Monday, July 24, 2023, that an emergency meeting of the NPCSC would be held the following Tuesday, July 25, according to an analysis by independent research firm NPC Observer. According to the official minutes of their meeting, the only matters on the agenda of the meeting were a draft amendment to the Criminal Code, which was not expected to be passed on Tuesday, and unspecified personnel matters or what is referred to as appointment and dismissal cases, which appeared to be the reason for the emergency meeting. First, about the only draft legislation. The criminal law is China's substantive penal code, and it is the country's most revised law. Since its last major revision in 1997, every NPCSC has amended the criminal code at least twice, except for the 13th, which amended it only once. The 14th Standing Committee has indicated that they will list criminal law amendments in their annual legislative program for 2023. It is difficult to determine what issues will be covered in the draft. However, Given the increased concern among deputies and the public about trafficking involving women and children following the January 2022 incident involving the chained woman in Shuzhou, it is likely that the draft will make adjustments to the relevant provisions. Since the previous batch of criminal law amendments was passed in December 2020, deputies have proposed 70 changes to the law, in addition to tougher penalties for human trafficking. For example, some have called for the criminalization of drunk driving, some have proposed cracking down on elder abuse in nursing homes, while others have suggested abolishing catch-all crimes such as provoking trouble or reducing the number of death penalty charges. Some of these proposals are likely to appear in the draft to be submitted by the presidency. Since we do not see a pressing need for the Standing Committee to amend the Penal Code tomorrow, we expect that the draft will be very important and will be adopted after three deliberations. Then, the reason for convening the meeting on Tuesday, beyond its typical bi-monthly schedule, seems to be due to another matter on the agenda, unspecified personnel matters. It is worth making clear that it is not unusual for personnel matters to be considered at the meeting, or for the nature of those matters to be unannounced in advance. Indeed, it would be unusual if no personnel decisions were made at a meeting. But it would be equally unusual if it considered only personnel matters at a meeting, so it may be that the criminal law amendments were added to make the meeting seem less unusual. Such special meetings are not unusual in and of themselves. Such meetings are not common, but they are not rare either. Since March 2013, the Standing Committee has held nine extraordinary sessions, for a total of 75 meetings, as of Monday. Some of them were convened to expedite the legislative process, example, the June 2020 separate meeting to approve Hong Kong's national security law, some were convened to help the legislature take on more workload, example, the January 2021 meeting, and some were convened because of special occasions, example, the September 2019 meeting for the conferral of national honors in advance of the 70th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. What makes this Tuesday meeting a truly emergency meeting and sets it apart from those nine special meetings is the haste in which it was called. This meeting was announced only one day in advance, whereas all previous meetings had been scheduled at least seven days in advance, 
according to public information, a legal requirement for non-emergency situations. The most obvious source of urgency was the month-long disappearance of Chinese state councillor and foreign minister Qin Gang. The reasons for Qin Gang's disappearance are unknown, and various rumors are swirling, which have already caused disruptions in China's diplomatic exchanges. Recently, both the British Foreign Secretary and the European Union's top diplomat cancelled their scheduled visits to China. Considering the short agenda, Tuesday's meeting should end by 3 p.m., after which we may learn whether a successor to Qin Gang will be appointed. Stay tuned. This is the China Briefing. China's army of unemployed graduates caught in economic cracks. Young Chinese are facing a record 21.3% unemployment rate, the result of a prolonged regulatory crackdown on private enterprise and a slump in hiring by foreign companies, Nikkei Asia reports. China's economy is graduating twice as many people as it did 10 years ago, but there aren't enough jobs available, leading graduates to consider pursuing higher education or trying for competitive government jobs for which they are overqualified. In addition, foreign private companies offering sought-after jobs have drastically scaled back their operations in China, further diminishing job opportunities for graduates. The epidemic has exposed growing structural problems for President Xi Jinping and the Chinese Communist Party, as the country's post-epidemic economic recovery has stalled and retail sales have fallen. Beijing unveiled a plan to ease market barriers and access to finance in an effort to boost private sector confidence. However, some analysts have questioned whether the plan truly marks a shift in attitude towards the private sector or is merely a temporary olive branch. Here's the China briefing. In Singapore, loud echoes of Beijing's stance spark anxiety. The Washington Post reports that Beijing's efforts to shape the identity and loyalty of Southeast Asia's Chinese community have raised concerns in Singapore, where the majority of the population is Chinese. Critics argue that Beijing's attempts to include citizens of other countries in its vision are creating divided loyalties and undermining social cohesion. Singapore, in particular, is seen as a key battleground due to its increasingly sympathetic population and close economic ties with China. Concerns have been raised about the influence of China's official media in Singapore, with the flagship Chinese-language newspaper, the Lianhe Zaobao, reportedly echoing Beijing's propaganda and promoting pro-China narratives. The paper was accused of downplaying sensitive topics and publishing articles by Chinese Communist Party officials without revealing their party affiliation. In addition, the Chinese government's outreach efforts in Singapore have been criticized for disproportionately targeting Chinese Singaporeans and attempting to shape their views and loyalties. Singapore has taken steps to counter foreign interference in domestic politics, but concerns remain about the impact of Beijing's influence campaign. As part of a multi-billion dollar campaign, Beijing has been increasing its public diplomacy and media presence in Southeast Asia, with the ethnic Chinese community a key target. China's efforts are twofold, aimed at boosting its image and programs while limiting U.S. influence in the region. The Chinese government views Southeast Asia as a key sphere of influence and is working to use overseas Chinese communities as vectors of influence abroad. The Chinese government's influence campaign in Southeast Asia includes promoting its official news agency, Xinhua, to media organizations in the region and establishing content-sharing agreements. It also involves targeted disinformation campaigns on social media. China's economic power has also served as an incentive for Southeast Asian countries to heed Beijing's wishes, undermining traditional restrictions on choosing sides. The Chinese government's influence campaigns in Southeast Asia, particularly in Singapore, have raised concerns about divided loyalties and the erosion of social cohesion. The Singaporean government has warned its ethnic Chinese population against hostile foreign influence operations and emphasized the importance of a distinctly Chinese Singaporean identity. 
However, there are concerns that Chinese influence efforts could undermine these efforts and lead to the destruction of Singapore's multiracial social cohesion. The situation in Singapore highlights the broader challenges Southeast Asian countries face in responding to China's growing influence in the region, as well as the potential consequences for their own political and social cohesion. Here is the China briefing. How the Soviets stole nuclear secrets and targeted Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb. The Belfer Center reports that the new film Oppenheimer, directed by Christopher Nolan, explores the intellectual and moral decisions of J. Robert Oppenheimer, the leader of the team that built the world's first atomic bomb. The issues depicted in the movie, such as nuclear threats and espionage, are still relevant today. Russian President Vladimir Putin has threatened to use nuclear weapons in Ukraine, Iran is seeking nuclear weapons, and China is expanding its nuclear arsenal. Allegations that Oppenheimer was a Soviet spy have been debunked, and the Biden administration's decision to retroactively revoke his security clearance is null and void. Oppenheimer's perspective and the movie's historical accuracy make it an important reflection on the continuing nuclear threat in today's world. Here's the China briefing. China's largest battery maker launches aviation division. China's largest battery maker for electric vehicles, Ningda Times, CATL, has set up an aerospace division in preparation for mass production of electric airplanes, reports the UK Independent. The company claims to have achieved an energy density of 500 watt-hours per kilogram, WH slash kg, the holy grail required for commercial electric aircraft. Ningda Times has partnered with state-owned aircraft manufacturer Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, COMAC, to form a joint venture. The development of electric airplanes is becoming more feasible following recent battery breakthroughs that address cost and capacity constraints. Here's the China briefing. China vows countermeasures after CIA director says agency rebuilding networks. The South China Morning Post reports that China has vowed to take all necessary countermeasures in response to comments by CIA director William Burns indicating that the agency has made progress in rebuilding its spy network in China. Burns said that the CIA has been working to rebuild its network after some of its agents were captured by the Chinese government a decade ago. He also mentioned that the CIA is working to provide early warning of any plans to attack Taiwan. In response, China's foreign ministry criticized the U.S. for accusing Beijing of spying while admitting to large-scale intelligence activities against China. China has been stepping up its counterespionage efforts, including passing a major revision of its counterespionage law earlier this year. Here is the China briefing. Washington tries to add some teeth to its cyber defenses. Foreign policy reports that China's recent cyber attacks on more than two dozen organizations, including U.S. government agencies, underscore its capabilities as an adversary. The incident coincided with the release of the Biden administration's cybersecurity plan, which is designed to protect critical infrastructure from cyber attacks and prevent the infiltration of government officials' email accounts. However, the plan lacks specifics on data privacy, digital identity, and cloud risks, and its deadline runs through 2025, adding to uncertainty about its implementation and future priorities. China's cyber espionage activities have focused on stealing intellectual property from U.S. companies, and these efforts could intensify due to U.S.-imposed trade barriers. Stay up to date on the latest China-related news, analysis, and policy briefings from around the world with China Briefing. Our team aggregates, synthesizes and summarizes the most important information from a variety of sources, including the media, think tanks, government agencies and industry experts. Our mission is to provide you with easily accessible and valuable information that is tailored to your specific areas of interest. We understand the importance of staying abreast of the latest developments related to China and aim to make this information accessible to our readers.